Well, uh, here we are at the Cloud Foundry Summit. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm CEO of Racken, founder of the Crowbar Project and a board member of the OpenStack Foundation. And I'm visiting the Cloud Foundry Summit to see and learn about Cloud Foundry and platform as a service. So, so what, have you been, uh, what have you been seeing and learning? Wow, it's been amazing to watch the enterprise adoption of Cloud Foundry and to really try and understand what makes Cloud Foundry so much, so consumable for these companies. It's, it's really an important component in the cloud architectures where people bring applications and really make them run at scale. And, and I, I thought you would have an interesting perspective based on for almost as long as I've known you, the type of stuff you've been working on, right? I mean, we, uh, in Cloud Foundry land, we sort of operate or we sort of deliver something way above the stack <laughs> from, from where you operate. And so in, in looking at uh, what goes on underneath the sort of application layer where, where you more reside, like what, uh, what, what have you been seeing in that area that's so, interesting? So good taste, right. I, my, my emphasis has been on physical ops automation. Uh, and so when you look at the very bottom of the stack, it's all about configuration and management and turning a lot of knobs to make things work in the right direction. And that really makes things confusing and hard. It's, it's a challenge. And so as you want to do applications and get more people involved, sort of narrowing the scope and knowing your target really makes a big difference in adding organizational efficiencies. Because at the end of the day, building applications is not about one decision or one person. It's about how all the pieces fit together. And what I see is Cloud Foundry helps those pieces fit together in a predictable way, which means your teams can scale, your scale, your ops can scale, that the whole infrastructure is going to perform in a way that you can expect. And that's a tremendous benefit. Uh, you know, when you look at cloud and you look at configuration management, there's a lot of choices, there's a lot of options, there's a lot of snowflaking. We see that in physical gear like crazy because there's so many different vendors and so many different models. But you know, at the end of the day, you really want your, your developers to sit down, know what they're going to do, know where they're going to do it, and how they're going to accomplish that work. And Cloud Foundry's really been able to nail that. And, and so what, that, and then, you know, so uh, Cloud Foundry's nice, but what, what are you guys doing at Rackin? So Rackin is all about doing physical ops, so direct metal, API-driven metal. Our job is to create a, an abstraction layer for physical infrastructure, so that people who want to deploy and scale data centers can just go directly to the metal, uh, and then they can run their physical infrastructures with a lot more confidence, repeatability, and patterns of practice uh, that we haven't seen at the physical layer, we've seen at the cloud. So we've really been sort of cloudifying metal, if you will, and making it right. much more operable. And, and how would you describe like the opposite of what you do in, in the physical management layer? Like how, how, how are things normally done if, if they're not doing uh, it? Normally it's somebody writes a whole bunch of scripts uh, until they get frustrated with their job and leave and hand those <laughs> off to somebody else. <laughs> um, yeah, physical. It's you know, physical ops is its own special hell, and all you know. I don't know quite why I decide to do it, except that people are so happy. It's like, oh, you automated the server bring up process, yay! Or right. you can tear things down and build them back up, and it made a difference. And so, it's uh, it's been rewarding from that perspective. But it, yeah, there's a lot of snowflakes out there in the physical ops world. Yeah, and, and one of the things we were talking about that was interesting is is. With, with like a, a platform, sort of like Cloud Foundry, it's almost, snowflakes are sometimes a bad term, but it almost gives you a field to create a bunch of snowflakes if you, if you want to. So the, the it's, I love the term snowflakes. Um, I heard it at Chefcom, we were talking about that as, as one of the challenges of the world. And operational snowflakes are sort of a two-edged sword. Everybody's unique, every ops environment is unique. When we talk about physical ops, we always talk about brownfields, meaning that you're going into an environment where you can't change certain things, you have to live with what you're given. So yeah, there's a lot of snowflakes, but they can be really expensive, because what happens is one person's snowflake is another person's anti-pattern. Mm -hmm. And so when, you're, when you have a team of developers or a team of operators, when they create things that are custom and unique, Sometimes it's business value, and sometimes it's technical debt. And the line between you know, those two types of, of snowflakes is, is really hard to distinguish. So Cloud Foundry as a whole gives people a way to get past technical debt. Racken and what we do with Adobe Crowbar gives people a way to get past this sort of, I made these individual decisions and they're hard to replicate. We get into something where it's much more standards and practices and right. patterns based. And then that translates into an accelerated effect because when you walk into a data center that Crowbar is managing, then you know how it's going to be laid out and you can repeat your right, It's a lot more predictable and repeatable and consistent. And that's and, exactly right. the same thing, same story that I'm hearing over and over again with Cloud Foundry and how it works and what people value from that. 
is, is that repeatability. All right, I know if I walk into a Cloud Foundry infrastructure, I know how to deploy my applications. I know how they're going to operate. I know how they're going to scale. Right. That's really valuable. Yeah, well, great. Well, thanks for uh, going over that with my us. Pleasure. We'll see you back in Austin. Thanks. <laughs>